start the vlog it's always gonna start earlier my camera was literally dead I'm like what happened but I got bud home she is home just let her walk around a little bit but she's back in her right now because I needed to start this vlog <laughs> so she is home she still um, stumbles a little bit but a lot better and her eyes look a lot better too they're not as cloudy they're still the like I don't know like <laughs> they're not perfect but they are definitely a lot better and she had um a stitch out. she got out um, taken out this morning so we will be going back to the vet in two weeks just to check with everything and the vet gave me all the medicine and explained how to use it so we got all of that done this afternoon at four o'clock and then I want to go through my weekly CBR with y'all and then I have some book mail and the first thing on my weekly CBR is my poetry collection which is Pillow Thoughts by Courtney Pepper now this is all about heartbreak love and raw emotions then we have the main book of the vlog which is project Hail mary by andy weir this is reading based on my astrology based on my is this my rising sign my moon sign which is aquarius and this is a book that was suggested for aquarius and it's already been on my tbr a lot of people love this book like obama loved this book because i was looking at obama's previous list of his favorite books and this was on there i don't remember what year i don't know when this was published but george r, r. martin brandon sanderson i don't know ernest klein i see the book he wrote though tim peak i don't know him and then blake crouch so this is this guy he rylan grace is the sole survivor on a desperate last chance mission and if he fails humanity and earth itself will perish except that right now he doesn't know that he can't even remember his own name let alone the nature of his assignment or how to complete it all he knows is that he's been asleep for a very very long time and he's been awakened to find himself millions of miles from home with nothing but two corpses for company his crewmate's dead his memory is fuzzily returning rylan realizes that an impossible task now confronts him Hurdling through space on a tiny ship, it's up to him to puzzle out an impossible scientific mystery and conquer an extinction level threat to our species. And with the clock ticking down and the nearest human being light years away, he's got to do it all alone, or does he? An irresistible interstellar adventure as only Andy Weir could imagine it. Project Hail Mary is a tale of discovery, speculation, and survival to rival the Martian while taking us to places it never dreamed of going. So I did start this on about 10% into it. Then my mood read that I will be starting tonight is The Haunting of Lee Harker. So sometimes the dead reach back. We will talk more about this when we start it. And then we have An Echo in the Bone by Diana Gobbledon, which is my ebook pick. This is following a family during the American Revolution with some time travel elements. So I do need to see if there's an audiobook for the Lee Parker one because I was looking at one of her other books and saw that the audiobook was free. The Ashburn House one, the audiobook was free. So I would love a free audiobook and I totally don't have scissors to open this. So I do need to go find some scissors and then I'll be back. I got the package open. I filmed a whole video today that I'm not gonna post about a TikTok if I should unhaul this dress or not. I definitely am. I've gotten compliments on it before, but it's supposed to be off the shoulder as you can see, uh, but if I lean over, it all just falls down and not everybody needs to see that. Even if they want to, they can't. I don't want creeps. And so I will have it up like this as well and it just constantly falls so I'm going to be unhauling it even if it's super cute but here are my prime day purchases so tabs for annotating books I don't remember the deals on what I got how much I got off on these things but tabs this is I think four 400 tabs so you know 100 of each probably I would say 
I can't tell though. <laughs> then um, I have two books in here. Whoa, I did not realize one was so big. So this I saw, uh, I don't remember if it was a bookstore or it was a page I follow. If I can find it again, I will leave it linked down below. But they did um, indigenous authors of like each genre. So these two I think are both nonfiction. In this one we have Mama Scotch um, by Daryl J. McLeod, which is a memoir. And it's um, Birds as Messenger, it's Campfire Song, it's the lingering horrors of the residential school system. As a small boy, Daryl J. McLeod is immersed in his Cree family's history, passed down in his mother's wild magical story. So it's just all about his life and his emerging sexual identity. So we have that one, which is a memoir. And this one, which I had no idea was so huge. So both of these got kind of bent in shipping, but that, I don't really care if it gets like that. This is The Unland Voices, an anthology of indigenous writing from New England, edited by, um, I never know how to say that name, Saboen Senior. And this one, so is it a short story? Okay. Whoa. Okay, they had it, I thought this was all notes or something, but they have it in English. And then what language the other language is in. So that's cool. And this book smells nice. I don't know if this is fiction or non-fiction. I'm not remembering because it just says writing. So Dreamland or Dawnland Voices calls attention to the little known but extraordinary rich literary traditions of New England's Native Americans. The pathbreaking anthology includes both classic and contemporary literary works from 10 New England indigenous nations. Through literary collaboration and recovery, so and Native American tribal historians and scholars have crafted a unique volume covering a variety of genres and historical periods, from the earliest petroglyphs and petitions to contemporary stories and hip hop poetry. This volume highlights the diversity and strength of New England Native literary traditions. Okay, that is awesome. That's through like all of time, and I've heard great things about the University of Nebraska Press, and that's who this published this. So. This one, I did not realize it was this big, it's over 500 pages. Yes, but some of these are source acknowledgements. So for the actual stories, you know, I'm about to say this is, okay. Yeah, it's over 600 pages, nearly 700 pages. So that will be awesome. So these are my two books that I got on Prime Day that are indigenous by indigenous writers. I just had my ice cream, it was great. Let's see what The Haunting of Lee Harker, I'm gonna say Parker every time because it's just a more common name than Parker. And I did get to 21% in Project Home Mary, but we're here to talk about the Darcy Coates book. Let's see what the back says. Lee Harker's quiet suburban home was her sanctuary for more than a decade until things abruptly changed. Curtains open by themselves, radios turn off and on, and a dark figure looms in the shadows of her bedroom door at night, watching her, waiting for her to finally let down her guard enough to sleep. That is terrifying. Pushed to her limits but unwilling to abandon her home, Lee struggles to find answers, but each step forces her towards something more terrifying than she ever imagined. A poisonous shadow seeps from the locked door beneath the stairs. The, the handle rattles through the night and fingernails scratch at the wood. Her home harbors dangerous secrets and all that Lee is trapped within its walls, she fears she may never escape. I heard about this book because the main character is agoraphobic and I was ag agoraphobic for a while. I think I've done pretty good recently in 2023. It's when I really like this time a year ago was when I really got out of that. Um, I don't want to say I'm like completely cured or anything, but I started when people would ask if I want to do something, I would just say yes every single time. I still do that. And now I'm like, oh, shivers. I'm like, I don't know if that was great either. I think I just need to limit that because I will just get so mentally drained if I do so much like in one week. So it is something definitely just a little bit you know you have to do a little bit at a time so that is why i heard about this book because the main character has agoraphobia and then throwing ghosts and that should be the ghost part <laughs> sounds like it's gonna be really creepy because i would be terrified of a ghost in my bedroom and as a kid i was only scared of that because i was reading paranormal books <laughs> so we are going to start the haunting of lee hey guys happy tuesday the hair is crazy i was just reading in bed i got to the 
25% mark in Project Hail Mary and I will be reading more in here today but I did think it'd just be easier since this is such a big book to talk about it now rather than wait till later and get all confused you know so I'm a little over 100 pages into this. I am doing the ebook so the notes are on my phone but it's not living up to the hype like this is definitely not a five star I don't even know if it's a four star it's a good book but okay so we'll go through the um call pal system so character our main character Rylan I like him um he's a good character but I wouldn't say he's anywhere near being a new favorite just because my issue is how quirky he is and even he acknowledges it because he's like holy moly fudge like those kind of words because he is a like middle school teacher but like in middle school I don't think my teachers were saying stuff like that and that just that's different to me is just like ugh, nobody really talks like this I'm sure people do but I'm like nobody that I know talks like that so this is really like you know side eye in that <laughs> and I don't really like that and then Strat is my I don't even know if I should say she's my favorite but I am extremely intrigued by her um she's the one who's putting this all together putting this whole mission together and those kind of characters in sci-fi there's only such a mystery behind them because I'm like what if they're really an alien because you know people always assume government figures are aliens I don't even know if it's government does she work for like the UN I don't know she's not American um so I really I don't know <laughs> uh, but she's my favorite just because there's so much mystery there like I think of the book Spear I think of the Themis Files series there's only these characters like that and they always really intrigue me and then atmosphere y'all know I love books where the world is in danger where the world is ending I so yes I do really like that aspect of it and the the premise of the atmosphere being alone in space very scary and it's definitely it does have that claustrophobic feeling it has that anxious feeling of we have to get this mission done we have to save earth and that and um for writing the writing is very fast paced I, I get through it pretty quickly it's very digestible which for sci-fi and with this I really didn't know because I heard that yes this is extremely like to my knowledge well researched is very scientific which for me I'm like the, this is too much for me and that that is one of the things because I'm like okay when he's in the lab I'm basically I'm reading it I'm not skimming but I'm like this goes his eyes <laughs> so it goes one one in one ear out the other is what I'm trying to say but you know I'm not listening I'm reading physically so it's the lab parts so of the science I'm just like yep yeah. Yeah, don't know what that means, but okay. And since he is a teacher, there are good parts of explaining what's happening. But still, I, it's still very scientific for me. And that's one of my struggles with the book. But the uh, t -t 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 plot, yes, I um, I want to know what's going to happen. There's a lot of intrigue there. This does have a great plot and the intrigue is great. But I'm really confused about this mission, how this mission is supposed to save Earth. They're going to the star that hasn't been impacted by these astrophages. And I'm having a very hard time picturing those. I don't know if they're big spears, because that's what I pictured at first. By big, I mean like this big. Or are they microscopic? I don't know. And so I'm having a really hard time picturing some of like that kind of stuff. And... As I was saying, I don't get the point in this mission, how seeing if this one star has been impacted, how that saves Earth. But I'm sure I'll find out because we are finding out stuff as the character does because the character has been in a coma, kind of has amnesia, and is finding out everything as the book goes along. So, yeah, this is probably a high three, low four. I don't know. I'm not absolutely loving it. It's not a five star. It's... A, um, very com like with Demon Copperhead they are very similar in their Goodreads ratings both a 4.5 with about half a million readers um, who have left reviews on Goodreads anyway or left ratings so a lot of people have read this and a lot of people have enjoyed it which I am enjoying it but it's definitely not a new favorite or anything but out of my zodiac experience that we're doing by reading by these um, my astrology this has been the best so far definitely so 
I am enjoying it, but it's not a new favorite. I do have some new book mail that we're going to open and then I need to go let Bud out of the crate because I'm letting her out periodically. I'm not leaving my cat locked in a cage. So I'm going to go let her out. She has taken her first round of medicine today and it actually went a lot better than I expected it to. It's um, a drop in her mouth and it, it actually took two two drops to get the get it all in there but you know with a little dropper thingy it's only like one drop of medicine and then um a steroid pill so she did well taking all that but i want to let her out to walk around and you know do cat stuff but we are going to go get the mail and open this package i really forgot to read the notes from project hell mary to y'all so in chapter one i was like that was a departure for um yeah it, it was just a big which is great for doing like flashbacks and all that because that was a problem i had last week with a book that it had a hard time to like telling the difference between flashbacks and the present so within the red line is something very common in this the writing is definitely comedic and conversationalist that's i don't know if conversationalist was the right word but it's just very easy to consume and then this is something, um, a popular quote. They say hunger is the greatest seasoning. When you're starving, your brain rewards you handsomely for, find, for finally eating. Good job, it says. We get to not die for a while. And yeah, when you're hungry, it doesn't matter what the food tastes like. And so that was a popular quote. And yes, this does remind me of Cloud Cuckoo Land, the future plotline in there where we have a character in a um, future society in a spaceship. So it's reminiscent of that plot line in Cloud Cuckoo Land because there are several plot lines in that book. Then this is another popular quote. Cool things about pendulums. The time it takes for one to swing forward and backward, the period won't change no matter how wide it swings. If it's got a lot of energy, it'll swing farther and faster, but the period will still be the same. This is what mechanical clocks take advantage of to keep time. The period ends up being driven by two things, two things only, the length of the pendulum and the gravity. Now, why that is popular, I don't know. I, I'm like, I don't know what that means. But I do only just underline the popular quotes. And then this one, this is this one I liked. All right, I'm well fed. I'm feeling a little better about things. Food will do that. And that's so true. If I'm ever like stressed out, or in a bad mood, I'm like, I need to go eat. I need to go get caffeine and that will make me feel better. And then I said on 29, this for real has me nervous. Yes, it's definitely, again, great atmosphere. And this one was talking about how in this plot, you know, they're trying to save the earth. This situation was dire and deadly, but it was also the norm. Londoners during the Blitz in World War II went about their day as normal, with the understanding that occasionally buildings get blown up. However desperate things, however desperate things were, someone still had to deliver the milk, and that's literally like we can be going through crazy stuff, like the sun getting dimmer, and we're all just at school doing our normal things. Like yeah, that's exactly how <laughs> how the apocalypse happens. And then this quote that was, kids are smarter than most people think and they can tell when a teacher actually cares about them as opposed to when they're just going through the motions. And that is so true. And I did not click the wrong thing. And then this was a popular quote. All life needs is a chemical reaction that results in copies of the original catalyst and you don't need water for that. So the popular quote there. And then, yeah, I really liked the section that was, um, of him and his like, I, I like the flashbacks. I think that's really intriguing, but all of this is definitely intriguing. And then this is when Hail Mary was mentioned for the first time, I highlighted that. And then this is one that I highlighted, not popular. It said, yes, I know that much, thank you. She looked to the ceiling. People only assumed our first contact with alien life, if any existed, would be little green men and UFOs. We never considered the idea of simple, unintelligent species. And true. Okay. Then, a popular quote, the star I'm looking at is not the sun. And I'm not going to read the rest because spoilers. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, is Andy Weir a scientist? Like, where does he have all this background knowledge on? Because this book is so scientific. And I'm like, did he just make all this up? Or does he have 
uh, history and science let me know if y'all know I will look it up eventually when I finish the book and this one was a popular quote and again I thought this was just so quirky and that's one of the things I'm not liking about the book I penetrated the outer cell membrane with a nano syringe you poked it with a stick no I said well yes but it was a scientific poke with a very scientific stick like dumb <laughs> And then this is a popular quote. Besides, if I had a nickel for every time I wanted to smack a kid's parents for not teaching them the most basic things, well, I'd have enough nickels to put in a sock and smack those parents with. I don't personally really like that because I don't like violence. But okay, so they're talking, so he is a teacher and he's, um, so it says 30 years I looked out at their little faces and 30 years they'd all been in their early, they'd all be in their early 40s They would bear the brunt of it all and it wouldn't be easy These kids were going to grow up in an idyllic world and be thrown into an apocalyptic nightmare And that's why I don't get why people don't care about climate change because all these little kids we see they're gonna be in the thick of it and How you can see just sweet innocent children and not believe that climate is going to happen to climate crisis but at the same time i think people are honestly just scared scared of the unknown because nothing like that has happened in our lifetimes and i so that's where i think it stems from is this fear of the unknown and then a popular quote here light is a funny thing its wavelength defines what it can and can't interact with anything smaller than the wavelength is functionally non-existent to that photon that's why there's a mesh over the window of a microwave the holes in the mesh are too small for microwaves to pass through but visible light with a much shorter wave wavelength can go through freely so you get to watch your food cook without melting your face off I did not know that but cool and then i have a hard time picturing the yeah, everything else's stuff i've already told you so what chapter am i on bad i did not put my bookmark am i on this one chapter seven yeah okay so i will check in with y'all later when we open that package because now i am past time of when i was supposed to go about at the cage so i'm going to go do that now i didn't open my package on camera because i don't have scissors in here that's something i would definitely have to look for at target tomorrow but i did get my sorry stuff on my lips i did get my under eye patches that i haven't done in forever and then i got the peppermint spray that we spray for pest and then i did get two short little books here so this is The Dead Lake by Hamid Ismailov. This is a haunting tale about the environmental legacy of the Cold War. And then on the line, Notes from a Factory by Joseph Pontus, translated by Stephanie Smee. It's um, an unable to find work, or hold on here, it's this best-selling French novel in verse is a poet's ode to manual labor and to the human spirit that makes it bearable. I'm looking at it like we love prose. And this one, I don't know if this is nonfiction or fiction, and I don't know if it was translated. So this is translated from the Russian by Andrew Bromfield. And unique smell. Very that was a very strange smell <laughs> and this author is from Kyrgyzstan but he grew up in parts of Soviet Kazakhstan so those are two books I got today translated pieces nice, we happy love that. Wednesday I did get more Amazon Prime Day stuff one of my packages actually got lost in the mail so I asked for a refund hopefully all that works out <laughs> because yeah it's so annoying because it first got um delayed because that Thing the other day with Microsoft there was like an outage or something I don't know what official terms to use for that but th that happened I forget what it was called but so that they were like that may have delays on packages and that was on Saturday here we are on Wednesday and it's saying your package is lost in the mail and I was like okay we'll, we'll get a refund because that apparently means that 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 book wasn't meant for me to get sorry I'm seeing there's makeup on my mirror here so that's wiping it off but i did get other books instead we got an independently published poetry collection and then a lot of non-fiction 
First we got Empire of Pain, The Secret History of the Sackler Dynasty by Patrick Rodden Keefe. And oh, I didn't realize it's the same guy who did Say Nothing. Okay, this guy like apparently does bangers for nonfiction. And this, uh, um, after Demon Copperhead, this one was online, seemed to be recommended a lot, and they do get name dropped in Demon Copperhead for corrupting basically America, starring the opioid epidemic. So this goes all into the secret history of that dynasty. And that one I think was also on the, the New York Times like best 100 books of this century so far. And then this one I saw at Hub City Books in Spartanburg, but I was only allowing myself to get four books, so I was not able to get it, but I did get it on Amazon. So this is Before the Movement, The Hidden History of Black Civil Rights by Dylan C. Pinning growth and with historical fiction, it always tells you what it is in the title. So this is new research to demonstrate how black people used the law to their advantage long before the civil rights movement. So just everything that led up to the civil rights movement. And then my last nonfiction, this was on the um, best books as well. And it was a winner of the Pulitzer Prize, which I have looked at that list recently and an Oprah's book club, which that's another list I trust. So this is Cased, the original, or Cast? Cast, I think it's Cast. The Origins of Our Discontents by Isabel Wilkerson. This is a majestic full portrait of an unseen phenomenon as she explores how America throughout its history has been shaped by a hidden Cased, Cast, System, a rigid hierarchy of human rankings, immersive, deeply researched, and beautifully written cast <laughs> inspires us to transcend artificial and destructive divisions towards hope in our um common humanity and isn't that, ooh, i just saw north carolina mentioned so we have that one and then the last one is published by hub city press which i i y'all know i visited them in spartanburg but this is thrush and hold by marlanda de Kine, and this was winner of the 2021 new southern voices poetry collection and this is a debut collection is a wholly radical unlearning and reclamation of self and what it means to be um a Gullah Geechee descendant so this is the author is from south carolina and she, they live with their wise dog, Malachi. We love that. And just seeing some of the names in this, I'm just like, wow, I never thought I would see some of this stuff in a book. But that's local author, local publishing house. Awesome to see. So just a little tiny poetry collection there. And I will be going to Target and I'll probably be buying books at Target. Yes, so that's all for now. I will update y'all when I get to 50% in Project Home Area, I'm currently at 48%, so it won't be too long. It'll be before I go to Target, most definitely. So I will update y'all when we get to 50%, and that's when I will see you again. Do y'all remember that song? I am now at the halfway point in Project Home Area. I still don't get what Astrophage is, and it's driving me crazy. I don't get why it's so important. I get that it's doing damage to the sun is infecting the sun therefore dimming the light of the sun obviously how the sun is right now like right now in the real world is absolutely perfect like we're fine but with this it's making the sun dimmer so therefore it will make temperatures colder and cause like the sixth extinction or whatever that is i don't get why we're putting these panels like solar panel like they're not like the typical solar panel in the sahara and how that is going to help and that it's, if, it, if the sun wasn't dimming, these astrophages would be one of the greatest hu discoveries of humanity. I don't get it. I don't. I get that we're on this mission to save the world from all this. So I don't have a lot of thoughts, but they said um, on page 102, like there was a smell of ammonia. And I heard that the gray aliens smell like ammonia because waste goes through the skin. Rather, they don't, they don't go to the bathroom, so they smell. Yeah, just random for y'all. Um, then this is a popular quote. Human beings have a remarkable ability to accept the abnormal and make it normal. And that is so true. <laughs> it's crazy. This is another popular quote. 
Oh, thank God. I can't, can't imagine explaining sleep to someone who has never heard of it. Hey, I'm going to fall unconscious and hallucinate for a while. By the way, I spend a third of my time doing this. And if I can't do it for a while, I go insane and eventually die. No need for concern. So, yeah, people probably thought it was funny. And then here's me saying, I don't understand astrophage. I don't get it. I don't get why it's so important. And hopefully I just get a better understanding the more I read. Because that's all you can hope for about yes. I'm at 52% now, chapter 15. I'm going to keep reading for the rest, for like the next 20 minutes. Then get dressed and head out to Target. I cannot wait to have caffeine. They were talking about humans and getting sleep. Yeah, I let myself sleep in last night. Like, I slept. I still got up at my normal time. But usually I wake up and then get out of bed. But I let myself sleep until like... 10 minutes before I had to get out of bed, which is really nice, but I still, I need caffeine and I can't wait to have it when I get back from Target. Late night update. Not really, it's not late. It's not even 9.30. I'm gonna be unhauling this dress, by the way, because why is it so low? Like, my friend picked it out for me and I love the design, I love the texture, but way too low cut for me. I think it'd be a great bathing suit cover up though. But I did go to Target. And these are the two books that I got because this is my last Target trip where I have like unlimited access. Like I can buy whatever I want <laughs> without, I'm not limiting, y'all know I'm not limiting my book buying this month. So this one is one that I saw in a lot of people's like favorite books last year. I think it was last year. And then I don't know if it was on the New York Times best list of like the best books of the 21st century. I don't remember, but it was on some list I looked at recently. This is, oh, I did not realize my copy is damaged. This is a beautiful movie novel about family, love, and growing up. And Patcha, once again, proves herself to be one of America's finest writers. So we got that one. And then we got a, like, TikTok, book talk darling. And I've never seen it on the front cover but that is one dark window by rachel gillig yeah um a fantasy novel that i just keep seeing i'm like okay okay may maybe i'll like it there and there's like tarot cards and y'all know i do tarot readings like every day so i i might like that element so this is Elspeth needs a monster. The monster might be her. A maiden must unleash the monster within to save her kingdom in this dark, lush, gothic fantasy debut. So hopefully it lives up to everything I see online because some books do, some books don't. But I did get to over a quarter of the way in The Haunting of Lee Harker. We will go through the Cop House system. Character loving. I feel so represented. I told you I don't really struggle with agoraphobia anymore, but this is really like perfecting showing that mental illness and so well done. And especially, so she has a ghost in her house. I'm assuming it's a ghost. Uh, when I had mice, I felt exactly how she feels. Like your home is your sanctuary and you're, you don't want to be home because there's a fear there, but where else are you supposed to be? Because that's your safe place. And oh my gosh, so relatable. Atmosphere, um, I'm not really feeling anything. I don't feel scared. I don't feel nervous. There's no real vibe there. No, there's not, but definitely a fall vibe. So yeah, maybe there's the vibe. Writing though is where my biggest issue with this is. And I think that's what's impacting the atmosphere and the plot. It is so descriptive and it does not need to be because I am losing meaning of the paragraphs in the description because I'm like, okay, what is being said here? Because there's so many words that's describing it. Let's like, I don't want to read like a paragraph late into the book. So the way he footsteps pause near my bathroom. It has to be looking inside and I hate it. Knowing it's awful eyes will be staring into a room that never sees strangers, examining the half empty bottle of conditioner. The cracks in the wall that harbor mold, no matter how hard I screw up. This is all one sentence, by the way. The mirror that is a fraction too small for the area above my sink. The discolored grouting between aqua green towels. Incidents. I feel as though a part of me is exposed. My secrets torn out of me, each one scraping painfully as they are extracted. I do not want the something to know me. Like, that's just too much info. That's too much description where what is trying to be said is loss. 
just say it feels like it's seeing right through you, seeing you. Yeah, I just think this could be written could be written so differently and just diced down a lot. And as I said, that's making me get lost with the plot. I'm like, okay, what's happening here? Because you're describing all this stuff like the mold inside the tile, like it's really distracting and the description's not doing it because it's not adding anything to the atmosphere for me so what is the point of having all that description did you have to hit a certain word count i don't know so i do like the representation and i am intrigued to know why this ghost or paranormal being is in her house what it is what that figure is so I, there is intrigue there but the plot and the atmosphere is getting lost because of the writing but the representation for agoraphobia is great so that is my wednesday update i will see y'all tomorrow on guys happy thursday i was seeing was in focus so we might have some kitty noises because bud is here with me but i did get to 75 percent into project how mary and i am attempting to finish this book today i have about 120 pages a little less than 120 pages so I do think it's possible, but I mean, this is a really big book, so I don't want to say 100%. And so I'm scared to go into like my call pal system of thoughts right now because I don't want to just have to repeat myself later. But I am going to be going through my notes, which are only two notes here. So I got my answer 55% of the way in on astrophages, why we have to go to this other galaxy. I don't know. I don't know. That could be totally not the right science term. And then this was a popular quote. Are all Russians crazy? Yes, he said with a smile. It's the only way to be Russian and happy at the same time. That's dark. That's Russian. So yeah, popular quote there. But I did, I will kind of talk about. Um, yeah, so I have got all my answers to all my questions right now. And th that's great that I got answers for everything. I was really scared the book was just gonna leave me hanging on some things. Cause so I'm like, we're at 70% and I don't have an answer yet, but we have got an answer, so that's great. But I was thinking about the character work and I do think Ryland and the character cast in general as a four star where I don't really have that much wrong with them. I like them and like with Ryland, he feels like a human. He feels like a real person being on this mission and everything. Like he, he just feels real. But his dialogue is cringy. It's too quirky. And that's one of my problems with this book is this why did they have to make him so quirky that's annoying like nobody really talks like that but another thing i realized i don't have an emotional connection to these characters they might be like good characters yeah but i don't when stuff happens to them i'm like okay that's happening i don't feel any emotional connection and i felt like that was something that i should point out i do think the character of rocky a lot of people are probably gonna feel like really hooked emotionally towards but no when stuff happened to him i was like cool whatever <laughs> not cool it's not cool but um yeah i don't feel an emotional connection to anybody in this book i did tell y'all strat's my favorite character and she's probably the one lacking the most emotion uh but i i like her but yeah there's no emotional connection to the characters of this book i just finished the book and i'm giving it a 3.75 out of 5 so it was a good book but i didn't love it it's not a new favorite so let's go into my thoughts. With characters, I had no emotional connection to the characters and Ryland Grace, our main character, was just so quirky with his dialogue that it was cringy for me. And I thought his dialogue was unrealistic, but overall he felt like a real human who is being sent on this mission. He felt very human. Um, I did like the side character of Strat. She was my favorite one because she just did what she wanted to do and <laughs> she gave Leo energy even though this is an Aquarius book. Atmosphere was really good. I really liked the atmosphere. Um, you can feel just the anxiety and claustrophobia of being in this situation, being stuck on a spaceship or being on Earth with this 
uh, catastrophe that you don't know if you can solve or not. Civilization is a ticking time bomb and you can very much feel the anxiety on these pages. As for writing, the science writing was a bit much for me. I didn't understand a lot of it, so it went over my head. And then I told you about the dialogue being kind of cringy, but overall this did go by really fast. And I didn't expect that. I thought it would be really dense, but I wouldn't say this book is dense. It was a medium paced book and I'm, I'm thankful for that. And I did the ebook by the way. As for plot, I did really like the plot, both, um, both timelines that we have. We have the before the mission and during the mission. They both have their entry. I was wanting to know what was going to happen on both. I wanted to know how they went about getting this mission all put together. And then I wanted to know if he was going to be able to save Earth or not. If this was going to have a happy ending, I'm not gonna say if it does or not, because obviously that's a major spoiler. But I was so intrigued to know where this story would go. I would have even made this more confusing and add a third timeline of when we are seeing him in um, space and all that with that. I wish we could have been seeing what was happening on Earth at the same time, just as like a dystopian climate catastrophe lover. <laughs> that sounds so messed up, but I love that trope in sci-fi. So I would have loved to see what was happening on Earth and happening with all the other characters when he was in space. But overall, uh, this was pretty loose ended and I didn't really like that. I wish it would have tied together more, but I guess there is a beauty in it being loose ended, but I'm not that kind of reader. So this was a good book and I would still recommend picking it up because I know everybody that I'm friends with on Goodreads loved this. So I am definitely out of the norm there. It is a four star on Goodreads, man. Yeah, I did really enjoy it, but I'm gonna be unhauling it because I read the ebook and I don't need this big clunky book taking up room on my shelf, but I'm going to go write my review, eat dinner. I have to give Bud some of her medicine. Um, it's basically a moxicillin for cats. So I need to do like, yeah, it'll be time for her to do, get her next dose after I do everything that I just said I'm going to do. I am going to be ending the vlog here. Let me just say the plot twist this book, um, The Haunting of Lee Harker, the plot twist this just took, I'm low-key shook and was not expecting it at all. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you made it all the way through, leave a blue, no, do a red emoji in the comments below. And as always, comment, rate, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring that notification bell to be notified when all my videos go live. I'll see you in my next one. And my next vlog is gonna be my birthday vlog. So fun, some surprises might happen. You never know, but I'll see you then.